This one's really important. You need to clean everything in your life. And I'm not telling you to clean your act up. I'm gonna simply state to you why keeping everything in your life clean is gonna make your life substantially easier. You want a cheat code? This is it. Wear clean clothes. Take a shower. I joke all the time, I tell guys, I say, look man, if you wanna be in the probably 85 percentile of men, take a shower and have a job. It's not that hard. Brush your teeth, brush your hair, wash your hair, and then when it comes to your home, vehicle, and anything to do with you, keep it clean. No girl wants to come to your house and sit in the bathroom and your underwear's on the floor, there's toothpaste everywhere, she feels like she's in a frat house. And let me tell you something about a woman. It's about how you make her feel. It's about how you make any person feel. And if she feels like she's in a frat house, then it feels like she's a whore. And as far as your day to day, how you dress and you groom yourself, it's gonna be substantially easier to get the respect of men and people in your workspace and get a job and be promoted if you treat yourself with that kind of respect. It's a direct reflection of the love that you have for yourself. So it's very, very, very important that you keep yourself clean. You keep your house, your room, your common space, your kitchen clean. You keep your vehicle clean because perception is absolute reality. And it's how you make people feel when they're around you and around your spaces. Don't mess this up. It's one of the easiest things you can do in life to get ahead. And I genuinely believe that. Yeah. And so the reason I say that nobody's coming to save you and I say it so loudly and almost in a way like I don't even care is because I really feel like we've told young men that if they try hard, if they will get their feelings hurt, otherwise it's all going to be okay. It is not going to be fucking okay. Yeah. <laughs> it is not going to be okay, bro. You can try your best. You can do as best. You can work as hard as you want. If you do not create results, you are going to fucking fail and yes. it's going to hurt. Yeah. It's going to hurt bad. And don't let me be the one to love you passively. Fuck you, it's going to hurt. Yeah. Nobody's coming. So I, I'm a big believer in the best day of your life is the day where you can really accept and realize that and smile because you know you want the ball in your court. Yes. If it's, if it's game seven in your life, and you're not Michael, and you don't want to act like Michael Jordan. If you're not, no, give me the fucking yeah. rock. It's mine. Sorry. Of course it's mine. Yeah. It's my ball. Of I'm course. shooting the fucking ball. Nobody's shooting the ball for me. I want the ball in my court. Give me the fucking rock. If you don't feel that way, you need to go see the man in the mirror. Yeah. Have a long conversation. Identify whatever weakness that might, whatever fear that is, because nobody's going to fix it for you. Because I don't have time to give a fuck. I simply have time to tell you, little brother, that. I want to see you win, but until you look at the world through this lens, you will fail. Yeah. You will fail or get lucky and get lucky long enough to fail big. Because a lot of times, guys, let's say you start a business and you start and, and you just somehow, some way, boom, let's say it's an internet business and you think you're captain, 22 year old CEO, but you've never been through any struggle in your life and you go to invest in deal B and it's in a different industry and you get f***ing wrecked. Nobody's coming. Nobody's coming. Yeah. Listen, do whatever you want as far as college, but let's talk about following your passion. Sure. Following your passion is absolute bullshit because that, because look at it like this. I like to work out, but if I thought that because I like to work out that I'm going to go be a personal trainer and then end up spotting people all day, I've lost my fucking mind. So I found something. The, the way you find passion is that you go through pain in something so much that yes. you become competent. And once you become competent, you get to walk in a room and help people in a real way when they otherwise would not have been able to do it. Then you become passionate. So you go through pain to get to competence and then you find passion and fulfillment in being able to help someone do something they otherwise could not have mm. if you would not have suffered through that pain. But most people do it the other way. They start with the yes. passion and then they, 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 the they, they end up like trying to start a, an OnlyFans management agency with right. no experience or whatever. Yeah. Or they're selling Bitcoin and they, they have also, no idea what they're talking about. And they fail. And they fail. And they fail. And yeah. I think that's a, another really outside of not understanding how businesses run and having entrepreneurial seizures and not understanding systems etc I think that's another reason businesses fail yeah is because they start off with this pie in the sky idea of something they think they like to do and then they realize that actual thing they like to do is only one X in an overall formula that actually makes a successful business and you could take that X out and put in Y and and most businesses will run pretty well 
And so they think they're going to do this one little thing that they think they like to do, et cetera, et cetera. And then they get burnt out real quick when AR is too high, mm -hmm. accounts payables late. They got people not showing up for work. They don't, they haven't built a culture and they haven't built any systems and they just get wrecked, overwhelmed. And then it's over. Yeah. It's over. Well, follow your passion then. They, they follow their passion yeah. and then they don't want to, because they don't want to work. They don't. That's what they think it is. Now here's, here's the thing. So if you're in a business that is not sexy, yeah. let's say steel, yeah, hanging steel, all over hanging country. steel in Northern Louisiana in the summer. How about that? Bro, f that bro, how you, about I that? How about, how about being a roofer in my home? My homeboy is like a millionaire roofer in in Nashville, bro. Tennessee in the summer. I'm telling you, bro, it's hot. And yes. on a metal roof, it's like, a, it's, like, it's, like, it's like working in a frying pan, man. Yeah. It's like working in a frying pan. But the point is, is that the business doesn't need to be sell, uh, sexy. You know, you, you think that you're going to be passionate about it. You're not. But I tell you, you get real fucking passionate when that check hits every yes, week. for sure. Or, or you're getting paid and you can live a life that you want. Yeah, you get real passionate about still building Zen. Yeah. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So in, in that regard, I, I completely, uh, completely stand by that statement because you know you could pick between doing something you think you like and something that makes your life an absolute dream and you're gonna have to go through some pain but I think that pain's gonna be worth it I wanted to do YouTube for a very long time let's talk about the four F's uh, <laughs> okay because this is kind of like your philosophy on like how to be a successful man in life. Yeah, and look, I don't think it's anything new. No, it's nothing you know, new, but I just, I, like, I just like the way you phrase it. Yeah, so I say, you know, there's a four Fs. There's fitness, finance, fighting, and f***ing. Uh -huh. If you can get that shit down, you're going to have a smooth-ass life, bro. Yep. I've pretty much lived my adult life with those things in mind. Mm. I feel like it, it could be argued when it comes to the fighting, but I think fitness is first. Right. I think that actual fighting is very primal. Explosive strength matters. Uh, athletic, yeah, athletic, you know, things like that. Mm. But I do think fitness first, mm. and then it's then it's kind of you know how you want to deal with those last three because mm. the first one with fitness goes into all of them. I think they're very close. But you know, the discipline from fitness allows you to have discipline and everything else. And, and everything else because you have to go through physical pain. Yeah, I'd probably go. You know, you could say fighting, finance, but I could see you switching that out, and making a great point for any. I mean, I, I, switch, I, I switch that up. I would put fucking last just because if you have all those other things in order, your your game. And because when I say fucking, I mean, of course, literally, but also like, you know, in general, just your overall experience and your interaction with women in general. I think it, it's right. very important. So if you have those other things in line, those uh, the last one fucking becomes substantially easier. It's just the middle two that I that, you know, mm. I think you could make an argument fighting in body language, mm. like having body language when you know how to you know, protect yourself, yep. you know, so you're not small. Um, but also I think finance can handle a lot of things as well. So, um, yeah, a guy is like, will carry them like a guy who has like a lot of money in the bank carries himself a certain way. And absolutely. so does a guy who can beat the crap out of you. Right. He also carries himself a certain way. You know, I, I think that both of them are kind of lopsided though, mm. because I've met fighters and a lot of times that's where the f true fighters are. Mm. And a lot of times, the fight, all the fighters I've known, they're generally really, really, really broke. And then I say this a lot, is I absolutely would not trade places with Zuck. Yeah. You know, I, you can be as rich as you want. If you're a fucking dork, yeah. it's worthless, you know? So- Because those are things you can work on. If you're fat or if you're a dork or whatever it is, like, mm -hmm. it's not like you are resigned to that fate. That's the consequence of a lifetime's worth of actions or inaction, right. more importantly, and not working on different areas of your life. You have the choice to be amazing. You absolutely have a choice. Yeah. And your value can actually be built. Dude, one of the best compliments I've ever gotten is a girl told me recently, she goes, two things. As a, as a man, I think you get better looking every year. Mm. And as a man, I think you become a better man every year. Yeah. And that's absolutely an option for any man. If you are working on yourself. Right. If you're not, yeah. then, you, then it goes the complete opposite way. And that comes down to the voices in your head, man. Mm. I always say that every person, but every man has two voices. He's got a bitch voice and a grown ass man voice. Yeah. And the more that grown ass man voice can say, shut the fuck up, go to the gym anyway, mm. do it anyway, the smaller that bitch voice gets, almost to the point where he drowns him out.
Mm. To me, I really think about it in that way. It's like, I got these two conflicting voices, but my spirit, who I am as a man, is actually that, that strong voice. And yep. I'm, I'm about to beat that other part of me into submission. Yep. And, and that's how I look at it, man. And, and it's gotta be that way, because if it's not, you start letting shit slide. And I don't think discipline is actually a straight line, but I do think it's more of a, here's the line, and here's how far I'm willing to get away from it. You know what I'm saying? And if you can't, if you can't have that conversation with yourself and you don't trust yourself to do it, mm. you are in trouble. You are. Unless you're superhuman. I think all of us have things that happen like big thoughts, yeah. you know, and it doesn't make you a bitch. It makes you a bitch if you ignore the voice that's telling you what you should do. Yeah. It makes you a if right. you listen to the bitch thoughts and actually, act and like do what they're telling you to do. Right. That's what makes you a bitch. It's like your actions are what makes right. you a bitch. And that's fucking quicksand. The one, because the thing, like you can control your actions. Because people think that they're, a lot of people kind of associate themselves with their thoughts. They think they are their thoughts. Yeah. And this is wrong. Because if you were your thoughts, then who the fuck is the one listening to the thoughts? Right. You're the one listening to the goddamn thoughts. Right. The thoughts are just these things that pop up in your brain from time to time. Right. We're not talking about, I'm obviously not talking about like deliberate conscious thoughts, like what's one plus one equals whatever. Yeah. I'm talking like this shit that creeps in your mind, like these doubting voices right. or these like, man the fuck up and get this kind of voice. Right. Right? And, and yo, man. Like you, you, aren't, you aren't either of them. No. You're no. the sum you're, of the actions that you take. You're in the center of them commentating the situation. Oh, you need to shut up, up, let's go.